65 million years ago, the planet Earth was rocked by a catastrophic event, a giant asteroid impact that wiped out the non-avian dinosaurs and many other species. But from this devastation emerged a new world, one that would be shaped by the survivors of the apocalypse. In the aftermath of the extinction, mammals and other small creatures that had been lurking in the shadows of the dinosaurs began to thrive and diversify eventually giving rise to the incredible range of life forms that we see on Earth today. This new world was filled with strange and wonderful creatures, from giant birds and carnivorous marsupials to saber-toothed cats and massive ground sloths. In the oceans, ancient reptiles like the Ichthyosaurus and Plesiosaurus were replaced by new and formidable predators, such as the fearsome Megalodon shark. The landscapes of the world were transformed as well, with vast grasslands and forests spreading across the continents and providing new habitats for a host of different species. Join us as we explore the Earth after the dinosaurs, a time of incredible change, innovation and survival. About a million years after the extinction of the dinosaurs, the Earth was a very different place from what it is today. During this time, known as the Paleogene period, the continents were still in the process of moving and changing shape. The planet was much warmer than it is now, with tropical forests spreading across the globe and the sea levels were much higher. The earlier Paleogene was characterized by the proliferation of mammals, birds and reptiles, many of which were quite different from the species we see today. The ecosystems of the time were also different, with different food webs and interactions between species, and began to evolve and adapt to the changing environments. With the huge dinosaurs now out of the way, mammals could exploit the planet's resources for themselves. Within a few million years of the asteroid impact, the fossil record shows an explosion in mammalian diversity. There is abundant fossil evidence for the evolution of shrew-like mammals called morganocodontids that evolved into the mammals that we see today. Some of the earliest known fossils of mammals are from the Jurassic period, around 165 million years ago, and include small, insect-eating animals similar in size and shape to modern-day shrews. One of these is a 200-million-year-old species named Megazostrodon, which measured about 10 to 12 centimeters long. It most likely ate insects and small reptiles and was probably nocturnal because it had a larger brain and the enlarged areas of its brain were discovered to be those that process sounds and smells. This evolutionary trait was likely to avoid being in competition with reptiles or becoming prey to the dinosaurs. It might be hard to believe, but all living mammals today, including us, descend from this one line that survived. In the oceans, the first animals to appear after the dinosaurs were ammonites, which were relatives to the modern-day nautilus. They were important predators in the ocean and helped to maintain balance in the marine ecosystem. In addition to mammals and ammonites, other early animals on Earth after the extinction of the dinosaurs included birds, reptiles and fish. The early bird species were mostly small and similar in size to modern-day sparrows while the reptiles of the time included turtles, lizards and snakes. Fossil evidence shows that these early mammals changed in size and shape over time, as well as in their adaptions to specific habitats and food sources. For example, whales evolved from a terrestrial ancestor that lived around 50 to 52 million years ago and gradually became better adapted to life in the water until they became the fully aquatic whales that we know today. This animal is named Pachycetus, a four-legged creature about the size of a goat that scientists now recognize as one of the first whales. Although it had a body of a land animal, its head had the distinctive long skull shape of a whale's. Over time, these animals adapted to the water and they lost their limbs, their nostrils shifted backwards and upwards, and four limbs turned into flippers, and of course, they grew in size immensely. Fossils of Pachycetus have been discovered in the Tethys Sea region, which was a shallow sea that existed between the ancient continents of Gondwana and Laurasia. 
During the Miocene Epoch, the oceans were home to a variety of marine animals, including many that are still present in the oceans today, such as dolphins, whales, sea lions, seals, sea turtles, and various types of fish. However, there were also many prehistoric marine animals that have since gone extinct. Megalodon, a giant prehistoric shark, is thought to have first appeared about 23 million years ago during the Miocene Epoch. Megalodon was a top predator in the oceans, and it's estimated to have grown up to 108 meters in length, making it one of the largest known sharks to have ever existed. Some of the other prehistoric marine animals that were present in the oceans during the time the Megalodon was swimming around were creatures such as Basilosaurus, which was a large prehistoric whale that could grow longer than 15 meters in length and lived during the Eocene Epoch and is one of the earliest known whales. There was another top predator in the oceans at that time, and it was something even bigger than Megalodon. We're talking about Livyatan, a prehistoric whale that lived around 8 to 12 million years ago during the Miocene Epoch. This whale is estimated to have been about 13 meters long and had massive teeth, suggesting that it was a formidable predator. The Livyatan is a close relative of modern sperm whales. But there were more than just sharks and whales in the seas and oceans. Dunkleosteus was a massive prehistoric fish that lived during the Devonian period and was known for its huge size, powerful jaws, and bony armor. The infamous Mosasaurus that the Jurassic Park movies brought to life was a type of marine reptile that lived during the late Cretaceous period. The largest fossil specimen measured was a whopping 17 meters long. Mosasaurus had a long, streamlined body with four flippers and a powerful tail that allowed it to swim rapidly through water. Its skull was elongated and had numerous sharp, pointed teeth which it used to catch fish and other prey. But despite its size and fearsome appearance, Mosasaurus was not a dinosaur but a type of lizard and is considered to be one of the largest and most successful marine reptiles to have ever lived. And then there was Archelon, a type of sea turtle that lived during the late Cretaceous period and was one of the largest known turtles to have ever existed. These are just a handful of the many creatures that evolved and adapted to aquatic life. But it was not just in the oceans that life diversified and exploded into many different species. There were many strange and bizarre looking creatures that appeared on land as well. Creatures that lived on land, such as rodents, evolved from early, shrew-like mammals and diversified into a variety of species, including mice, rats, squirrels, beavers, and many others. Carnivores also evolved from early, shrew-like mammals and gave rise to cats, dogs, bears, and other predator species. Members of the cat family, Felidae, are believed to have evolved from a group of small, shrew-like mammals called Miacids, which lived during the Paleocene Epoch, approximately 66 to 56 million years ago. The Miacids were a diverse group of carnivorous mammals that were adapted to hunting small prey. Modern-day mongooses can trace their origins to Miacids. Over time, some Miacid species evolved specialized features that made them more efficient hunters, such as retractable claws and more powerful jaws. One of these specialized Miacids, called Proalyrus, is considered to be one of the earliest known cat-like animals. Proalyrus lived during the Oligocene Epoch, around 30 million years ago, and had several features that are characteristic of modern cats, including retractable claws and a more powerful bite. Proalyrus evolved and diversified, eventually giving rise to various lineages of cats with different anatomical features, including the saber-toothed cats. One of the most well-known groups of saber-toothed cats is the Smilodontini tribe, which included Smilodon and Homotherium. These cats were well known by their long, saber-like canine teeth, which were used for hunting and possibly for defense against predators. The earliest known members of the dog family, Canidae are believed to have appeared during the Eocene Epoch around 56 to 33.9 million years ago. One of the earliest known Canidae is a small fox-like animal called Hesperoceon, which lived in what is now North America around 40 million years ago. Hesperoceon is believed to be the ancestor of all modern canids, including dogs, wolves, foxes, and coyotes. 
but there were other predators aside from the prehistoric cats and dogs roaming the plains. Terror birds, known as forest russids, are a group of large flightless predatory birds that were native to the Americas approximately two million years after the extinction of the dinosaurs. The exact timing of the appearance of the terror birds is not well established, but it's believed to have been in the late Paleocene or early Eocene, about 62 to 58 million years ago. Titanus waleri was one of the last and largest species of terror bird. These birds dominated the continent for millions of years before going extinct around 1.8 million years ago, possibly due to climate change and competition from other predators. Titanus was likely a carnivorous bird that fed on a variety of prey that may have included other birds, mammals, reptiles, and possibly even large insects and invertebrates. Fossils of Titanus have been found in various locations in North and South America, and some of the bones show signs of carnivorous feeding including tooth marks and damage caused by digestion. It's interesting to note that while some modern birds are descendants of dinosaurs, the forest russids are not. They are a separate and distinct group of birds that evolved independently from dinosaurs and belong to a group of flightless birds known as Paleognathi, which also includes the modern ostrich, emu, kiwi and the cassowary, which is the deadliest bird in the world. But terror birds weren't the only interesting and bizarre creatures to appear. Several species of prehistoric sloths evolved and lived during the Cenozoic era, which spans from about 66 million years ago to the present day. Ground sloths were the size of huge bears that lived from the Oligocene Epoch to the Pleistocene Epoch, which spanned from about 33.9 million years ago to 11,700 years ago. They were quadrupedal and had large claws that were likely used for defense and digging. Tree sloths lived from the Oligocene Epoch to the present day. They were arboreal and had long limbs and curved claws that allowed them to move easily through the trees. Today, the only surviving species of tree sloth is the two-toed sloth and three-toed sloth. But where are the snakes, you might be asking? The evolutionary history of snakes is complex and not fully understood, but scientific evidence suggests that snakes evolved from a group of small, lizard-like ancestors called stem squamates that lived more than 100 million years ago during the time of the dinosaurs. These early stem squamates were likely small, insect-eating creatures that lived on the forest floor, much like the early shrew-like creatures. Over time, some of these stem squamates evolved, becoming more elongated and legless. The earliest known fossils of snakes, such as Earphys underwoodi, date back to around 95 million years ago and show features that are similar to those of modern snakes, such as the presence of a flexible skull and a long, slender body. Titanoboa would evolve from a small group of boas and is considered to be the largest snake ever discovered, with the largest known specimens estimated to have reached lengths of up to 12.8 meters long and weighed up to 1,135 kilograms. So, while snakes did not evolve directly from tiny shrew-like creatures, they did evolve from small, lizard-like ancestors during the time of the dinosaurs and have since evolved to become the diverse group of animals that we know today. And finally, we come to our own ancestors. Fossil evidence shows that early primates had small bodies, long tails, and grasping hands and feet, adaptations that would have been useful for climbing and foraging for food in trees. Over time, primates evolved into the diverse groups of primates that we have today, including monkeys, apes, and humans. But there's so much more to cover about our own species and we'd need more time. So if you want to see that in another video, let us know in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, show us some support with a like. We appreciate it. And make sure to subscribe to stay tuned here for more videos in the series. Thanks for watching.